This is Kelly Northey recording on behalf of Dr. Kathy Colossa. Please forgive my pronunciations of the various medications that we will discuss in this part of the module. This segment includes other approaches to weight management, such as special foods, supplements, drugs, surgery, and more. There is good level B evidence that drugs approved for long-term use by the FDA may be used as part of a comprehensive weight loss program, including diet and physical activity, for individuals with a BMI greater than 30. The 2014 obesity guidelines do not address the use of medications, however. Individuals using medication may find participating in Eat Smart Move More Way Less contributes to their success. For pharmacotherapy to be both safe and effective, the following guidelines should be followed. Drugs should never be used alone, but used in combination with diet, exercise, and behavior modification. Reasonable weight loss goals include a 5-10% to weight loss over 6-12 to months and long-term maintenance of reduced weight. A person can expect to lose 4 pounds of weight loss in the first month. If this is not the case, either the individual is not changing their behaviors or the medication is not working and should be discontinued. Some other prescribing guidelines include that the benefits of pharmacotherapy-assisted weight loss may be greater than the risks for an individual with a BMI greater than 27 if they already have high blood pressure or high blood sugar or other comorbidities. Physicians usually first try to see if a patient can lose one pound per week with diet or physical activity over a period of six months. The healthcare provider should continually assess the drug safety and efficacy and see the patient monthly. The medication can be continued if effective and there are no serious side effects. The clinical trials show that there is early weight loss, but it tapers, and by 12 months, the person achieves the same amount of weight loss as someone who used only diet and physical activity. Unless an individual has made significant changes in their behaviors, the weight often returns when the medication is stopped. There is a small list of medications approved for weight loss. They are either appetite or absorption. They either affect appetite or absorption of fat. This slide shows the most commonly used agents. A popular appetite suppressant, Meridia, or Sibutramine, has been removed from the market. In 2012, two new medications were approved known as Qsemia and Belvic. This slide shows their actions and possible adverse effects. More on these a bit later. In 2014, Contrave was added to the approved list. There is no best way to predict which patient will respond to which medication. Patients taking Qsemia lose 9% of their body weight. Patients taking Belvic lost 3 to 4%, and patients taking Contrave lost 2 to 4%. Those who use the medication suggest that Qsemia works better with older patients who are heavier and have more medical problems. Belvic seems to work for those who are younger and have trouble with satiety, and Contrave seems to work for those with cravings. It's not on this slide, but Xenical is often helpful for people addicted to fast food because it trains them to eat better. Insurance companies have not typically cost the co covered the cost of these medications, although that is changing. Phentermine has been around for a long time and is available as generic. It is relatively inexpensive and is only indicated for short-term use, less than 12 weeks. It acts by sympathetic stimulation, modulates norepinephrine to decrease appetite. There have been no cases of valvular disease reported currently with phentermine use alone. It is unknown if long-term use could lead to primary pulmonary hypertension. The side effects include headache, insomnia, nervousness, palpitations, increased blood pressure, irritability, and dry mouth. 
If an individual does not have trouble with their appetite, this type of medicine would not help their weight loss. Orlistat, marketed as Xenical, is a different type of medication. It is a lipase inhibitor that decreases the fat absorption from the intestines by one third. It only works if there is fat in the meal, so a patient takes 120 milligrams at three meals of the day. The overall diet should not contain more than 100 grams of fat or the patient will experience gas, bloating, diarrhea, or anal leakage. In 2010, the safety of Orlistat was questioned when patients taking it developed a rare liver disorder. The company maintains that no cause and effect has been established and that the product is safe. A warning has been added to the over-the-counter bottle. So a person without adequate knowledge of sources of fat in the diet and skills in menu planning will fail this medication. An individual should have at least one session with a registered dietitian before starting this diet. They should also take a daily multiple vitamin supplement either two hours before or two hours after taking the medication. Orlistat is available in over-the-strength, over-the-counter strength. This is half strength under the name of Ally. This is not a dietary supplement, but an over-the-counter medication. Note that over-the-counter medications are regulated differently than dietary supplements. This medication has been noted to be safe and effective and it is also subject to good manufacturing practices. The over-the-counter dosage blocks 25% of the fat consumed. It is suggested that to avoid side effects, a meal contain no more than 15 grams of fat. That means that if used three times a day, it will block 108 calories, and its use could lead to 1 8 to 1 4 pound weight loss per week. Dr. Colossus' patients who use this medication effectively report that it's not the calorie savings from using the medication that helps them, it's the behavior change that they make to avoid having the gas, bloating, diarrhea, and anal leakage. Cusemia is a combination of phentermine and topiramate in an extended release formula. It is the only FDA approved medication for once a day use for chronic weight management as an adjunct to diet and physical activity. There have been a number of studies and the results vary, but generally speaking, 17 to 21% of the placebo group and around 70% of those taking the medicine lost 5% of their body weight at 12 months and another 7% taking the placebo lost between 48 and 49% of 10... Sorry, I'm gonna repeat that last sentence and another 7% of those taking the placebo and between 48 and 49% lost 10% of their body weight at 12 months. It is an appetite suppressant. Although both of these medications have been on the market and some doctors have been prescribing them for weight loss, it has a novel time release. The individual begins with a starter dose for 14 days and then, and then increases the dose. Physicians are asked to advise the patient to discontinue the medication if they have not achieved a 3% weight loss by 12 weeks or a 5% weight loss by 24 weeks. This medication should not be skipped or stopped suddenly. Its use should be discontinued gradually to avoid seizure. It is only available through certified pharmacies. Prescription forms are sent from the physician to the pharmacy that mail the prescription to the home. The cost ranges about $140 to $175 for 30 tablets, which is about $4 to $6 per day. It is during the first four weeks of treatment when adverse events are experienced. The person should discontinue gradually if they have blurred vision, headache, irritability, dizziness, abnormal sensations like burning or prickling, insomnia, depression, anxiety, or if they become pregnant. These are concerns about potential, there are concerns about potential birth defects, and therefore women capable of becoming pregnant are asked to have a pregnancy test and then to stop the medication if they become pregnant. 
The next medication we will discuss is Velvic, which was approved by the FDA in 2012. It is a lorcaserin hydrochloride, which affects serotonin levels. It has been given the final drug scheduling as a class four, which means it has little addictive properties. There have been some concerns about heart valve problems and breast tumors. In the studies, participants have modest weight loss over placebo, barely reaching 5% weight loss. The concerns for individuals without diabetes are headache, dizziness, fatigue, nausea, dry mouth, and constipation. Patients with diabetes need to be cautious of hypoglycemia, headache, back pain, cough, and fatigue. It is expected to cost $4 per day with a daily two-pill dose. Contrave is made up of two known medications, bupropion and naltrexone. FDA approved its use in 2014 and is a combination of an antidepressant and opioid antagonist. The bupropion has been used as an antidepressant and as an aid to smoking cessation. Naltrexone has been used as a painkiller and to fight addiction to alcohol and drugs. Together, they work to suppress appetite and decrease cravings. In the studies, a modest weight loss over placebo of 6% is reached. Other benefits seen in the trials include an improvement in cardiovascular risks, including triglycerides, HDL cholesterol, and LDL cholesterol, and insulin sensitivity. The concerns or side effects include nausea, constipation, headache, and insomnia. At this time, it has only been tested for a year, so the safety of using it longer than a year is unknown. As with some other antidepressants, there is a small increased risk of suicide in 18 to 24 year olds. This medicine is not for use in pregnancy or with adults who have a history of seizure, uncontrolled hypertension, or who are already taking opioid painkillers, MAO inhibitors, or psychiatric drugs. It is not approved for youth under the age of 18 years. The dosing starts with an eight to 90 milligrams per day, once a day, increasing to two tablets per day by the fourth week. It is new to the market and is priced at more than $200 per month. Dr. Colossa has heard positive experiences with this medication, but she does not have any personal experience with it yet. The company also has a support program called Scale Down. The medications we have been discussing have been approved for adults. There have been some limited trials in children. The FDA has approved Orlistat for those in children over 12 years of age. Metformin has been studied in teens. It is thought that metformin might reduce food intake, inhibit lipogenesis, and reduce fasting blood, close, blood glucose and insulin with approved insulin sensitivity. At least one study has reported a 10 pound weight loss in six months with a reduction in BMI by about one unit and a small reduction in waist circumference. With the rise of childhood obesity, there are many people studying the use of medications in teens and children. Physicians have the authority to prescribe medications even if FDA has not approved the medication for that indication. This is called off-label use. Several medications are used in this way for weight loss and they are listed on this slide. SSRIs like fluoxetine and Zoloft, <clears throat> bupropion, Sympathomimetics agent, like phentermine, used in smoking cessation. Zonisamide, the side effect of this seizure medication is appetite suppressant. Topiramate, which is an anticonvulsant, which seems to slow weight gain associated with antidepressants. Metformin or glucophage prevents blood sugar from rising or lowering insulin and reduces hunger. GLP-1 agonists, like Bieta, is an injection for improved glucose control in type 2 diabetes. These are actually in review for a weight loss indication and if approved would have different names. SGLT2 inhibitors like Invokana or Ziga and Jardinance in 2014 have been heavily promoted for their weight loss with glucose control and have a four to six pound weight loss over six months. 
They are expensive, however, about $280 for 30 days. Although there is just a small list of medications that have been approved for weight loss, there are up to 100 agents in development. Many are targeting the weight regulation pathways in the brain. Weight regulating hormones, which prevent starvation, are leptin, ciliar neurotropic factor, or CNTF, adiponectin, and axokine. The gut hormone, which inhibits food intake, is peptide YY3-36. The news is filled with reports of these types of medications. These early reports spawn interest in dietary supplements touted to do the same thing. Note that the selective CB1 endocannabinoid receptor agonist, Rimonabont, has been dropped from development in the U.S. and removed from the European market because of concerns related to suicidal ideation. FDA expects a medicine to lead to a 5% weight loss from baseline and no increase in cardiovascular or other risks. There are many novel weight loss aids. One introduced this year is neither a medicine nor a dietary supplement, but a food. It is called Meal Enders. It is included in this conversation because it is an interesting concept. The developers call it a signaling lozenge. It is a candy-like substance with two layers. The outer layer is sweet, which we associate with the end of a meal. The developers report that one of the problems we experience is overeating during that 20 minutes that it takes for the satiety hormone peptide YY to tell our brains that we are full. So the inner layer of this product is a blend of natural and artificial flavors that tingle and help you stop eating. Dr. Colossa has tried this with her clients and several of them have said that it also made any food or drink that they tried to eat after the meal, taking the meal ender, taste less appetizing. So it was not easy. It was easy not to eat more. We are not, however, endorsing this product and there have not been any published papers to date. So the bottom line for those who use medications include the average weight loss is 11 pounds, but the patient still remains overweight. In studies, they were more likely to achieve 10% weight loss from baseline than those who are taking a placebo medication. Many experienced improved blood pressure, cholesterol, and insulin sensitivity. Of those taking Xenical, about one in three will have GI side effects. Of those taking any medications, about one in three will experience some mild side effects like headache, nausea, and constipation. There is no way to predict who will be successful and which medication will help the most, and lots of people drop out of the trials. And diet and physical activity, along with taking the medication, is key.